everywhere it looks like so today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making a, a cable kind of tie for uh the mic here so yesterday we ended up going ahead and making the uh nut for the cheap amazon boom arm i guess to accommodate to kind of get that usb plug in there and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making uh, clips very basic clips to go onto the mic boom arm that hold the cable up uh, give some strain relief to the uh, usb connection itself so without further ado um let's kind of get over to it uh one thing we did do not really updating just yet but we'll see if it kind of works through so uh We'll see how that happens. Go ahead and subscribe. You might see it. So let's bring it on over to Fusion. And then we'll just go ahead and start over here. Uh, like I said, pretty simple, but uh, needs to be done. So I figured I would do a live stream on it and you can kind of see what happens here. So I've... I put a vernier on this tube here and I know it's 400 thou by 400 thou. So I'm just going to start from up here, 400 thou. And let's start and bring this stuff over here. So there is the outside of the clip. And then what we're going to do here is let's start and build a little retainer in on the bottom. Uh, so I'll maybe bring this over. Let's say 20 thou, maybe 30 thou. Just enough to put a little clip on there. Then we'll bring that down, say, let's make these. Under thou thick. Yeah, that looks all right. Um. Let's start and build this profile on this side, and then we'll just mirror it over. So let's offset this. Hundred thou. I think a hundred thou looks okay. Give us a little bit of meat so it doesn't snap, and then. Uh, Not like that. Let's mirror this little section over here. And then come through. Extend that. Extend that. Extend that. We'll trim this one off. All right, I got to measure the cord itself. So one second. Okay, the cord on this is going to be 146. Mm -hmm. 146, anybody use 
PETG. Yes, I have. Um, had ABS. Ran to PETG. Uh, let me get this designed out here and then we can switch over in the chat and I will show you my curse settings for PTG and we can kind of go from there so we said that's 146 so let's pop that in the center so 146 let's uh, let's put it in at 150 for a little bit of squeeze or not so much of a squeeze no you know what put it in at 146 because that'll that will hold it a little bit better pop that back in so there's 146 so now what we want to do is we want to offset this one um that in at 50 thou and then we're gonna break out if that's half we want it's gonna have a little bit of a squeeze in it but we'll just kind of put it in there like that i keep putting this line and getting rid of it so i'll make that in as a construction So we'll put that in there like that. I think that should give us enough of a squeeze to hold that wire. So let's start to break some of this down. All right, so that looks good there. Good there. Lost my line up there. Switch that back to solid. Not too keen on the sharp angle in here, so let's at least go halfway here. And yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's go halfway. And we'll bring that up. All right, we can chamfer in that area under here. This one goes, that one goes, or fillet, sorry. And make it look nice. So put a little 50 thou rads on there. nice and then let's bring this in here because we don't want this too sharp oh don't forget the that's your pretty much from horizontal up is now going to be your pinch point so we got a little bit of a pinch point in there so that'll work and then a little trick oh let's let's do these areas down here first uh, let's put that over um uh, how do i want to make this look here just so it has a little bit of a grab on it So the reason for, no, actually we're doing that the opposite way because when it goes onto the bar, it's going to be coming in from this area here. So we'll help that slide over that bar initially. 
so we'll mirror this little piece right there and then it's got a nice clip under it good morning Vinny. how are you buddy i got coffee for you i got coffee for you tomorrow come see me tomorrow buddy <laughs> you knew that was coming you knew it that will be the staple of this channel coffee tomorrow so inside this little space here uh what i want to do is i want to put a little bit of a relief sometimes the printers they don't they're, they're not a hundred percent uh if you're let me rephrase that some printers are 100 percent accurate on on 90 degree tight corners depending upon your quality if you're uh at a you know a four nozzle and your your qualities quality is at a 0.16 you can get away with it Vinny, are you at work buddy or are you on your way to work so what i like to do is i like to make my own kind of relief in these corners when i need something to snap in tight so what i do just put a little uh, pretty much just put a little box in there oh buddy i hear you I hear you. Well, I hope you have a great afternoon today. And then let's go ahead and mirror uh, that, 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 and that. Back over to the center line. Then let's start and trim some of this stuff out. And then what I always do may not be the best is I always put a little 45 in there. Get rid of those two outside ones. So now the printer is forced to go around in there. Yeah, the CR10 is good for that. Um, my uh my ender is also really good for that uh sometimes when you're pushing really small intolerances are very tight um you you technically don't see this per se um i've done a couple designs throughout the house where i needed it to act snap so so perfect and putting these little reliefs on there does that uh sometimes the other reason that i do that is for uh this tube here so the tube does have a little bit of a radius on it so i can try and match that radius um sometimes these tubes depending upon what you're working with um because they're cheaply manufactured uh, they're not going to be consistent all the way down so a little bit of a relief that i that i put in here kind of and it helps with that up on the top end and then what i do i always make sure i do this relief on one end and then i'll i will always you know kind of put a small fillet on the bottom end just to just to wrap that printer around but then again this is these are some of the things that you learn along the way, depending on how many prints you've done to how many things you've thrown away because they didn't fit. And you start expanding your, your tolerances to, you know, make things fit. Sometimes we design a little bit loose. Sometimes we design a little bit, a little bit tighter. So fortunately, uh, one ender I have here is um, is dialed in pretty good. It's got SKR Mini and, uh, you know, running Marlin Bug. Uh, BL on it, and it's it's solid with glass. I don't have the steel, but uh, still, 
you know, the four nozzle. But vents, and, and this is why vents, hang on, and this is why we here ended up doing WS2812B lights outside. Now, I know we're squirreling from the print here, but the WS2812 lights are operated off of WLED, which is operated off of a uh, Node MCU board, which is powered by a little micro USB and then a small external power source. So I put these lights up, mark my words, last, last October, last October, put them up and it was actually cold when, when Jody and I put them up and we, we didn't really clean anything. We didn't really prep anything. I pulled the 3M tape off the back stuck him to the east trough and i think you've seen him last time you're here stuck him to the east trough and wired him in they have not moved they have they have not bowed they've not moved uh i have no shorting issues they stay up all year now with the wled profiles you can run all kinds of stuff we have an emergency one which strobes flashes blue and red um, we did one for COVID. Um, we do we do all kinds of different effects on it, and it's pretty much sit at the computer for two minutes, uh, pull the effect that I like, and let her go. So I'm I'm fortunate enough to have learned over from Doctor Z's channel there, uh, running home assistant, uh, Blade 2021. It's kind of held my hand quite a bit for Node Red. And, uh, okay. See you buddy. Have a good day. Uh, blade 2021, like I was saying, has held my hand quite a bit with the node red side. Um, learning that language on kind of what you can and can't do. Um, but yeah, we're pretty much, you want to put Christmas lights on? It's pretty much, it's good. Automated comes on at sundown, turns off at a certain time, runs certain effects. It, it's good. So Vinny, if that's something you're looking into, uh, in the description below, there's two Discord channels, a Discord chat for this live feed, as well as a Discord chat for Dr. Z's. Uh, you go there, Home Assistant, I think there's a WLED topic in there. Um, that's kind of where we all hang out. But So yeah, that may be something to look into in the future. And hey, if you ever want to see it, I think I have uh, one small clip on the channel uh, with regards to our Christmas lights we have here. And that's it. I actually kind of funny story. I actually turned the uh, emergency red and blue lights on. We, we ordered Domino's one night. Yes, I know it's not good. Uh, cardboard pizza, but we ordered Domino's one night and the, the guy that delivered the pizza just before he pulled up, I ran in the house. I hit the emergency button and it was flashing and strobing red and blue. And I go out and says, well, you like your lights? You can, at least you can find the house. He, he, he didn't know what to say. It was absolutely hilarious. And uh, kind of shocked that thought we did it for him. But that's our little secret, I guess. But back to back to the clip. So trying to make an Amazon mic boom. Uh, trying to make a cheesecake out of a sandwich, I guess. Um, fortunately, this is what we're doing to make it work. So, so we have a little relief in here. Uh, we have this relief down here. Since we're throwing in fillets, might as well throw a couple in there. This all looks good. Tops look all nice. That should be a nice little bit of a pinch point there. And I think I'm going to run these, uh, let's say at least half an inch. So that should be, I think it should be nice enough to kind of run that in there. 
all right buddy uh make sure you're safe don't overstretch i want you to throw a hip <laughs> i will say vince i miss you buddy uh i miss the banter uh we used to have daily but uh fortunately we won't be able to do that anymore uh drop me a line outside of here and i can kind of fill you in on uh what's going on so but other than that uh vince do me a favor share the channel i don't i don't know maybe i'll get you some coffee <laughs> all right back to the part i think we're good here a couple little reliefs and i like it I do like it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this STL, this one out. And we're going to print for this arm. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. One day, one day we will upgrade the Amazon mic boom or mic arm, mic boom arm. I'm not sure what you call it to the uh blue the one that blue offers so has the uh quarter 20 little uh threaded piece on there and one day i guess if this little pink subscriber thing gets all the way up to the end there that will that will be my gift, I think. Because I think by the time I get all the way up there, another 418 subscribers, this thing, this thing's going to be broke. I don't think it's going to last that long. But anyways, let's STL this out. There again, it is a basic video. So let's carry on with the basic video. If you're unsure on how to do this stuff, actually today, I will walk through the entire process from design to exporting the STL to Cura to printer printing and kind of see how that goes. So, so before you export, you have to give it a name. Uh, so let's put this Amazon clip, uh, mic clip. So let's save that. So Amazon mic clip. Now we're going to export this out. So let's put this into our 3D section here. Amazon mic clip. And then we want to change this down here. Save as type down to the bottom STL. Click save and then click export so while that is exporting switch it over to here kind of see how things are going i will say that chat is way too big so let me just shrink this up a little bit Uh, it looks a little bit better. To be honest, I don't think I've had this many chat things on here. So I don't think I've ever been able to kind of resize it. So, yeah, so unfortunately it's, uh, you know, we did get a better mic. Um, not sponsored. Um, I was trying to do my mic through my headset via Bluetooth. It was always having a little bit of an issue. Couldn't get it synced correctly. I'm not sure if this is synced perfectly yet. Um, I'll watch this one back and I'll I'll kind of take a look after and see how it is. But so yeah, so I, I got this one from Best Buy locally. Um, it was one of the cheaper ones that they had there. So that's what we ended up doing. And then uh, had it on the holder on the desk, but it was 
too far away. Unfortunately, that's the issue. So I ended up getting an Amazon boom mic for 23 bucks. And as soon as I started putting it together, I realized that the, the post, which goes into the clamp, which attaches to the table is the clamp's okay, but the post that goes into the clamp is flimsy. Not, not good at all. Um, so yeah, product review, yeah, Amazon. I will show you the one that I got. So you don't get bear with me here. So let me open up my Amazon account and I will show you orders. All right, so this, this is the one that I got. So blue Yeti nano mic boom with foam windscreen. One rating, two stars. So that little part there on the left is kind of the flimsy part. Unfortunately, it was the only one that I could see that attached, or let me rephrase that. It's the only ad that I could see which indicated the blue Yeti Nano. Uh, a lot of the other ones were indicating that the even the Yeti Nano was too heavy for theirs, even though the prices were a lot higher. Um, so unfortunately, that's why I didn't get them. So I figured this one's actually advertising. Um, the blue uh, Yeti Nano, and it was it was probably the cheapest one that it can that I had found in. Now I know why. And there's my review. Don't bother. There is my review. So that's why it has. Would I rate it two stars? Two stars. That's my review. So it didn't even have a review before. So I was the guinea pig. Do not buy from Sunmon this Blue Yeti Nano holder. No good at all. So we're just over half on the STL right now. And who doesn't want to see it? Cute dog, right? There's let me see if I can wake her up. Cinder, <gasps> hi, pretty girl. Hi, pretty girl. Hi, usually one or two, or it's usually only two of the dogs that come down kind of hang when we're down here but cinders down here keep me company i don't know where the other ones are yet but yeah so unfortunately it's uh it is what it is with this monitor with this mic boom and we're just trying to make it work that's all that's where we're at now so we have Amazon Mic Clip STL. You can always go ahead and click Show in File Explorer. And let me shut down Fusion. And then I have this here. So let's go ahead and double click that and open it up. And get rid of that. That's going to open up her running four seven one yeah i don't know if you've seen so the the uh blue arm is 
I'm going to say it because I don't think anybody in my family is going to watch this long enough. The blue arm is Christmas gift number two. And I don't know if you've seen on my main screen here. Let me show you. That chair down at the bottom, Secret Labs. That's that's Christmas gift number one. So I'm going to try and pull everybody together to try and get enough money to get that one. So we said five, right? So let's go ahead and select it, right click it, multiply it by four, because we already have one on deck. So there's our five. All right. Now, settings I'm gonna have for this one are one six, just because that's a little bit tight up in the top there. Oh, I, I want it to be nice and it's not gonna take that long. Uh, my infill is going to be around 15%. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. My material is sitting at 215. Speeds. So I'm going to keep my speeds considerably low for this. Just for that reason. Uh, now one thing I have to do. Is I'm going to open up my. Let's open up the ender and printing this on today. And we're going to go ahead and turn it on. So the ender is now on. Let's see, we're on in here. Let's go ahead and click. Connect. Marlin should be up. And this is kind of the process that I do when I go to print. Right. So we're live. Everything's good. I will get my bed going. I've, I've kind of lagged behind on this one because I usually get it going as I'm doing my Kura. But let's pop this up at 60. Minimize this. Let's just go through these settings one more time. If you're following and you're not really sure how your settings are and you're trying to mimic this. Uh, I got these from Chep, the 0.32s. Chep on Filament Friday, a uh, big shout out to him. Um, he ended up uh, showing you how to get rid of the elephant's foot or their mushroom on the bottom. And this was one of the ways to do that. So that's the reason why I'm at 0.32s. My shells. Uh, don't really touch those. My infill, like I said, is at 15%. My materials, I start at 215, I come down to 210. And my flows in my initial flow layer. So this has all been calibrated over from um, since we're doing this, let me pull it up. So that was over from Teaching Tech or Teaching Tech 3D Printer Calibration. So big shout out to him as well. Um, you want to go to this page here. You can go through start on the first one, go all the way across. And then extruder E steps. So he's pretty much made everything so easy to follow and to get your printer dialed in so that's why my numbers are the way they are for the flow and the initial initial flow uh, my speeds this is just um what you prefer obviously your your printer has limitations but um my travel retraction speed that's kind of where my traction speeds are just to make any uh, glooping or stringing or anything like that between like pillars or posts or anything uh, my cooling I'm at 45 the reason I'm at 45 is because they run the hero 5 run the hero 5 5 with a 50 15 dual um, dual fans on it on the uh, part cooling 
the original OEM uh, nozzle fan, but new new part cooling fans and cooling supports. Obviously, there's no support on here. My skirt around the outside. I only do one skirt. And that's about it for there. So let's bring this back up. So we're sitting at 60.2. So let's just go ahead and slice this because it's so slow. It might be about an hour. Hour 45. Let's go ahead and click on print. That's going to bring this preview up. I like to follow on Octoprint myself. So I can see where things are coming in and make sure everything's looking good. So now what it, what's going to happen is, let's see what's a better preview for you to see in here. So what this is going to do uh, I think I just have a live printer feed. So obviously that camera's not set up. So we'll we'll kind of go back to this one here. So let me actually clean the bed, which I didn't do. As you can see, I forgot to clean that off from last night when I was printing my new nut. So I got my new nut. <laughs> November. So yeah, so what this is doing, BL Touch through the um, Marlin on the SKR is doing a mesh. And I run it every time. Every time I run it. Why not? I'm not in that much of a hurry to pull the setting from previous. I am a little heavy handed sometimes. So when I'm pulling bigger prints off, I may, uh, well, I do, I do, uh, move the springs, even though I have die springs on it, uh, the upgraded die springs, it, because essentially the positive stop for the bed coming back up is determined by the screws. Now, every time you move that plate, are they moving? Aren't they? I don't know. Um, so to ensure I get a really good first layer, I always run the test. So as that was doing the uh, bed mesh leveling, it brings the nozzle up to 170, 160. 160 no 170 i'm not sure and it heats that nozzle up to 170 while we're doing the test so that kind of stabilizes at the 170 and then as soon as the bed mesh level is complete then it uh, brings it up to the 215 and then we do two painting stripes and then we're kind of off to the races So it's pretty, it's pretty cool how you can be able to get something as cheap as this, even though it's not good, but be able to design something, um, to go onto it to, you know, to make it look a little bit, uh, a little bit more functional, a little bit safer. Um, 
my investment is obviously my mic, not the boom arm. So I'm trying to protect that cord going into the mic. Uh, and that was the, the reason for that. So, so we got two paint stripes done. Now we're going to do our single skirt. Shouldn't obviously be too big. And then uh, off to the races. So all the files, uh, yesterday's nut and today's clips will be, I will post the details on both videos. I'm not sure which one if you're watching this one. You want to see the nut, the first part to it, go back. Um, and then, uh, I will host, or I, I will put in the description, the, uh, the link where I host all the files. All the files are free, um, for when I'm doing this. The only payment is uh, subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing. And and if you're actually downloading it, you must like it. So subscribe and it kind of you kind of get to see what else is coming out. So I do come up with some cool things, uh, some practical things. Some things are fun. Um, but yeah, they're free. Just hit the subscribe and uh, helps me out. I need to get this little this little bar like right here all the way over it would be kind of cool and i have that set up for december 25th is the goal um will i get 418 subscribers between now and december 25th absolutely not 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 gonna happen but it's a goal sometimes we don't reach our goals but something to look forward to. But yeah, I ended up doing a couple of things for the stream today. Um, one of them is obviously this goal thing right here and the latest subscriber. And if you subscribe, if you're new, hit the subscribe and something should uh, pop on the screen. I don't know if it works. Let's go ahead and push the button, see if it works. But it's live, right? So if you do it live, it'll work. It's after the fact. Sorry. So everything looks to be going pretty good. So let this run for we say one hour and 39 minutes right here. So that'll be good. So I'll get that going and then I will post pictures. I'll, I'll install them. I'll post pictures up and the files, like I was saying, will be hosted over in cults and they're free. So go over there, pick them up and share it out. Hit the subscribe. Thanks for watching. Um, I know it's basic, but that's why we're all here. Anyways, thank you very much. Have a uh, good, safe week, and uh, we'll catch you around on the next one. Bye.